Microsoft Excel is a very powerful spreadsheet program. For this four-part assignment, you're, or you are only going to touch on some of the features that Excel can do to make calculating and putting in numbers so much easier. Before you get started, though, it's really important for you to pay attention to the pointer meanings. So for the first, as you can see, as I click, I am getting a very thick cross. So that means I am in the selecting of cells area. So you say, Chris, or Dr. Held, whatever you call me, what is a cell? Well, a spreadsheet is comprised of columns and rows. As you can see, the rows are numbers, the columns are letters. The intersection of a row, or I should say a column and a row, is called a cell. And as you can see in our formula bar up here in the top left, our cell indicator shows that I am currently in cell A6. Okay, so that's where my selection pointer is. The selection pointer is also used to select multiple cells, also known as a range. When you are getting just a simple I-beam, that means you just type. So we're pretty much, when you're in a cell, you're ready to type. There's a fill handle. So that is used a lot, at least in this particular class, for the ease of copying formulas, um, consistent numbers, um, to other cells without you having to enter them over and over again. So for example, I'm going to use a built-in function called sum, and it's going to sum the range from B7 through B9. And I get my result. Now, what if I had uh, 100 columns? I don't want to do that for all 100 columns, so because you typically would probably have more than just one or two rows. So what I would do is I would go over to my fill handle, and as you can see right now, it's in my select, and as I go up a little bit, it's in a very thin cross, which is a fill handle. And I can copy that fill handle all the way across. Now remember, I'm getting zeros here because I have no numbers in here. But as I add numbers, it's automatically adding it up. Now I don't want to do that, so I want to undo that, undo this one, undo that one, and I'm ready to go to the next cell pointer. So this right here is an arrow pointing to the right. This will allow me to insert a row. And if I put it here on the B, and as you can see, it selects the whole column, I would be able to insert an entire column. Okay, so what it does is it's basically shifting everything else over to the right or down. Now, I don't want to do that here, so I'm going to undo all that as well. You can also manually adjust your columns and your rows. So this is column width, and this is row height. Okay, so I want to increase the column A width. A quick way is to double click. And what it does is it'll take me in my first column and find the longest line and adjust the width to that longest line. And now I really don't want all this extra space. And it actually looks like this particular text that's in here is going from A4 all the way over to a different column. So let me undo that so you can see. As you can see, it looks like this is going all the way over to D4, but technically it's only in one column and only in one cell, and it's A4. Okay, and what it's doing is it's spilling over 
to the following areas. But if I started typing here, notice that it truncates it. Okay. I don't want it to be truncated. Obviously, I'm putting it there for a reason. Uh, like I sh said, you can double click and automatically adjust it, but I don't want that column that big. So we'll go ahead and wrap the text. And all I did was click on this. Yours in a full screen should probably say wrap text. Notice what it did. It pulled it. Everything's in cell A4, but it just adjusted the row height automatically by wrapping it within the cell. A spreadsheet is actually part of a workbook. So let's say I have... Right now I have four spreadsheets and I want to add more, okay? Let's say I have a hundred spreadsheets. Well, all the spreadsheets and the data within the spreadsheets is saved within something called a workbook. So if I do a file save as, and I save the file and I give it a name, it's actually saving it as a workbook so that when I open it up, it's going to bring up All of my sheets so it's basically one big one file that contains everything within that file so sheets is the most common and of course within the sheet all of the information um, there are approximately well there's a little over a million rows and um, 16,384 columns within a sheet Okay, I'm not just saying 100 sheets. I am saying within each sheet. That's a lot. I personally have never used all of that, and it all depends, obviously, on your computer's memory, um, the speed, the RAM, which all of you should have should know by now because it was in the previous assignment. So, with all of this said, we are going to be starting part one which primarily focuses on entering data and formatting data. Now, as you could see, I put Chris here and I put a number here. When you enter in text, it aligns to the left. And when you enter in numbers, it aligns to the right. That's not set in stone as far as you can center it. You can write a line text as you can do the same thing with numbers. So I'm going to be going into the next part of part one, formatting and entering data into a spreadsheet.